When this question was asked, the answer was no, but in the time since then, Minecraft 1.20 has added trims to leather armor, even when it is dyed. This means there are billions of different combinations of leather, trim, dye combinations, but rather than just saying there's billions of them, let's work out exactly how many there are. Because there are 16 different colors that you can dye armor with, but you can continuously dye it more and more and more, up to the point where there are 5.7 million different color combinations of leather armor. This is according to the Minecraft wiki, so if we take that number at face value, and we look at the latest snapshot where there are 11 different trims, as well as 10 different things that you can trim onto those, then you can see that that's 110 different possibilities for every individual color. This means for every one of the unique 5.7 million dyed colors, there is 110 different variations, or in total, 628,478,180. And that is for every individual armor piece. Bear in mind, bear in mind that you can actually take four different armor pieces, different dyes, different trims, different types of trims, and so if you treat the entire set as a unique piece of armor, there are now that many combinations, but to the power of four, because there's four different armor pieces, and that means there is a total of, oh dear god, this is a big number, I mean, it's so big it doesn't fit on the screen, we had to make it scroll, but, uh, you know, that is, I believe, one decillion, 560 nonillion, 130 octillion, 101 septillion, and you know, it's just a very big number, can we accept that there is a near infinite number of possibilities, every human on Earth can have not just one set of dyed armor, or one set of dyed armor for every Minecraft world they have, every single human can have, I think it's gotta be like septillions of different armor types. There are so many types that the same two armor pieces will probably never be crafted if you're doing it randomly, and I think that's beautiful, but there is a real key question about this when you hear that there's a decillion different ways you can customize your armor now, which is, I'm just gonna ask, why does trimming exist? This is a great question, Oliver Afton, thank you for asking it, but the answer is actually Actually, no, and that seems a little bit weird if you're either a technical player or you're the sort of person who just never cares about uh, microtransactions and the, the the weird skins you can get in games to make yourself look beautiful. And ultimately, yeah, if you're the sort of person who doesn't care about how your character looks from the outside, which if you play in first person, why would you need to? Then realistically, there's no good reason to trim your armor. The only reason I think I'm going to trim my armor in my long-term survival world, if you don't know, I play exclusively solo, and uh, therefore no one's ever going to see my armor except maybe on YouTube people will, but also I think it's going to be a fun time trying to trim the armor and to deliberately have some weirdly trimmed, you know, neverite trimmed leather and stuff like that. I think there's going to be something beautiful about that. However, to answer your question, why does trimming exist? It is purely an aesthetic feature because people love their skins. People love to look beautiful and customize their character. We live in a world where it actually can be very hard to customize your appearance in a serious way and where customizing even your surroundings can take some real time. And that's why people love games like Minecraft. That's why people escape to the video game world, and that's why they want to look like this. Oh, and if you don't think that's beautiful, I don't think you're beautiful. But the face asks, are you capable of predicting what comes next? Maybe referring to what else is coming in Minecraft 1.20? And the simple answer is actually yes. Let me use my spooky predictive power. So, I mean, this isn't that hard to do. You'll see tweets from developers. Like this one came from Slice Slime on February the 1st before the snapshot. And then, although people have attributed this to being the infinite number of ways you can customize armor, what this actually is, is the new infinite effect. You can now apply an effect to you for infinite amount of time rather than just a really really long like a hundred thousand seconds and so uh, that's a pretty exciting little change right and then also we know that in 1.20 the sniffer is coming we've seen screenshots of it apparently the screenshots are from java and the gameplay is from bedrock but either way that is coming to minecraft probably in the next couple of weeks we also know specifically they've said the only other things we know are that there's customization based features coming i mean we've seen plenty of that and we also know that there are features to connect the rest of 1.20 together those are both incredibly vague hits but that means that we should be expecting to hear the, you know, the final theme, the named theme of the update somewhere in the next few months as well. And I think that means we're in for an exciting time. This is one of the first times we've ever gotten to where they've released everything they said they would. Again, the, the sniffer is clearly mostly done, just waiting on the last few phases. And so now the question is, what is going to happen in the last few months of development? It could be nothing. It could be that now they've done everything they need to. They take a few months off. Or it could be we get some of the best unannounced Minecraft features we've ever seen. That is something we have to 
to wait and see, and that is something that I'm incredibly curious about. Speaking of incredible curiosity, am I the only one who doesn't care about armor trimming? It does nothing and is expensive. Funnily enough, I think the fact that it does nothing and is expensive is part of what makes it appealing as a cosmetic. It stops being as much of a cosmetic if, say, trimming it with ores gave it a little better or higher stat boost, because now you'd specifically need those trims just to get the very best armor possible. I think having a set of aesthetics that is separate to the set of things that make armor better might be a good thing, because it means you can totally forget about the feature if you don't care, but also it means that if you do care, you can specifically do stuff about that. Speaking of things you care about, I fought the Wither on every difficulty for Bedrock this week to show the difference. It was insane on hard difficulty, by the way, but they say, ironically enough, I just finished losing my Shulker with two sets of Neverite gear and my Tridents to the Wither in my Survivor World set to hard. Why is the Bedrock version of the Wither so much harder? And yet, yeah, this is something a lot of Java players don't know, is Bedrock difficulties have so many more variations to them uh, that in terms of like, it's not just more damage, the Wither genuinely has more attacks and more ways to mess up your life uh, on hard difficulty on Bedrock. And so why is that the case is a very valid question, and the best answer you can get is that, well, most of Bedrock's history, all it was doing is being a weird different version of Minecraft for different platforms, and so when they'd add a feature from the Java edition, they'd add it in a way that was more interesting if it was easy to do so. A lot of Minecraft Pocket Edition developers were very prolific in trying to make the game better in the features they were adding. Obviously, this presented a problem when Bedrock eventually caught up to Java, because now there's a bunch of features that don't match, but that is where parity comes into being an issue, because the Bedrock Wither is better than the Java Wither if you want an interesting fight, whereas the Java Wither is better than Bedrock Wither if you expect difficulties to be consistent. Which is more important? I don't know, but the more important question here comes in from Jonathan Brugan. Can you sh please shrink the giant cat in your videos? And if you're curious as to why it's there, um, so I'll, I'll give you an example piece of gameplay. This is uh, footage from one of my live streams where I use face cam in the bottom left. You're probably aware of that, but uh, in the bottom left there is the face cam, and if I show you that gameplay while it's actually moving and I'm talking, it's very bizarre that the mouth is moving in the bottom left, but to say different words than what I'm saying now. It's very jarring for a lot of people, and so what you can do is you could cover that up with a big black box or perhaps an orange square, but now you've got a really ugly corner of the gameplay that's missing, so the easiest compromise where you don't have to look at my face saying words that don't match up here, but also where it doesn't seem like you're missing too much, is to use this cat which conveniently covers up that corner. That is why I sometimes have the cat in the corner of the videos. It's not there deliberately trying to annoy you, it's just replacing my face. Although, if you want to see my face, wow, here it is now, look at this. Uh, I'm in the person, do you like it? Look, it's all green screen and magic, uh, but this is me saying the words I'm saying right now, but not what I was doing back there. This gameplay was recorded during a live stream, because most of the Minecraft that I used to do off camera is now in live streams, and so my face is in there, and we could always record a second copy without that, but we're not doing that right now. Speaking of things we're not doing right now, since they're doing Java Bedrock Parity, maybe they're working on the offhand slot. I mean, right now we get one hand on Bedrock, on Java you get two hands, you actually get two hands on Bedrock, but you can only use it to hold some things, you know? Hold GoPro? Yes, works. Hold phone? Nope, does does not fit in the hand. That's how Bedrock is right now. And uh, the solution to this is uh, obviously to add dual wielding to Bedrock in its full. And we've seen that they've been doing a little bit of like playing around with stuff. However, it does seem most likely that they won't add dual wielding to Bedrock until it comes to the Java edition. Uh, sorry, until they add the combat ad uh, update to the Java edition as well. They're using dual wielding as a way to make the combat update better. But the combat update's been gone for so many years. I was talking about this on Twitter recently. I did a poll asking who thinks thinks potions should be stackable, and overwhelmingly people say, yeah, why aren't potions stackable already? Well, here's the thing, potions are stackable in the combat snapshots, and they won't release the combat snapshots till they're absolutely done, but it's been years. At what point do we scrap that update and say, you know what would be a real good quality of life feature? Oh, quality of life, is that the theme of the update we're working on? Maybe stackable potions, maybe have the offhand actually work, would make Minecraft better. I think at some point you need to make that decision, right? And so yeah, that's something I would say. Uh, anyway, let's move to the next comment here, because the United States government is responsible for mass shoe. Ooh, that was not the comment I intended to read. Toycat, I love your comments, and I love your content. Ooh, Toycat, I love your content and insightful commentary, which is why I've paid my Toycat tax recently. Watching your wacky speedruns made me think of one that may be right up your alley. An Annihilus speedrun, uh, fastest to enchanted armor or a great pickaxe so you can throw it in the void. This is a really fun idea, actually. How fast can I get enchanted diamond armor and throw it into the void in Minecraft? Or maybe into lava, perhaps you could say, because the void is only really accessible. You know, that's, that's a really good idea, actually. How fast can I lose 
throws everything that I care about to the void. Really good speedrun idea. I might just do that. Speaking of speedrun ideas, I might just do. Uh, Glovani Navarro asks, how do you get this snapshot on Bedrock? Asking, of course, about the armor trimming snapshot. Wow, doesn't it look incredible? How do you play around with these new things? If you're a Bedrock player, you can't. It's been two snapshots now for Java, and Bedrock has not added the equivalent features. It's a bit of a bummer. Honestly, it seems as though as a whole, like, Minecraft Bedrock used to get snapshot features uh, sometimes before Java, sometimes a bit after, and sometimes at the same time. Now it's just consistently, it comes out a day or a week or a month later for Bedrock than it does for Java. They do all of the fun testing stuff on Java snapshots, and then when it comes to Bedrock, it's like, well, this is something else. It'd be fun if Bedrock previews did also have new things they're working on. I don't know if there's a good reason as to why. It, it does take longer for Bedrock previews to roll out, but like, surely there are some things like the sniffer that are basically done in Bedrock. Let us play around with it. That's my idea. Speaking of my idea, um, <laughs> I want to talk about one of my favorite videos of the year. Uh, because, uh, Chuck Wreck Truck Rep, uh, Shrub Deck. So, Tropek Tropek asks, uh, on my 39 survival tips you aren't considering video, again, a video I'm really proud of, they ask, is it 39 like in the title, or 40 like in the description, or maybe 45 like you say in the video? And I want to clarify this one, because it's one of the silliest situations that happened. So, that video, uh, the way I got that to, you know, be the video, is I got 50 Minecraft tips that I thought were really good, and I decided to save 45 of them for a video, because I could just throw away 5, that I didn't think were worth saying, or weren't going to be the best, or couldn't flow, uh, very easily. Easily, so I got rid of five of them to make 45. But then when my editor came around to editing it, he was like, oh, you said 45 in the intro, but it's actually 40 once you count them individually. And I was like, oh, okay then. And then I put the description in, I was ready to go. And then when I sent it off to my, uh, you know, when, when we're like just about to release it, I got a lot of comments saying, Toycat, it says 45 in the title, uh, or 40 in the title, but it's actually 39. And I guess I just never bothered updating the description, which is why it's beautiful. And that video has three different numbers of things. It's a good video. It just happens to not have a very accurate title. Also, I think this thumbnail, you know, it's just a, it's just an enchanted compass. It's very interesting that people liked it. So thank you for, if you've watched that video, if you haven't, it's one I really liked. But speaking of things I really liked, for a game so obsessed with parity, how did it take six major updates to change the player height? This is obviously referring to the fact that 1.14 on Java added the uh, 1.5 block high character when you're sneaking, but that only just came to Bedrock Previews last week. And the answer is, um, yeah, there's no really good answer for this one, is there? The simplest answer I could give is that they weren't really obsessed with parity until 1.16. 1.16 is when they decided every feature that comes to one version should come to the other. But even that, that that's something I've heard a lot, but even that's something I don't buy because 1.16 has exclusive Java features like the Never Ravines or the Bedrock having uh, blocks in the ceiling. And so uh, why did it take six major updates? I guess there's just such a long list of parity changes, they assumed it was low priority. Speaking of low priority, something that I am not giving low priority is to is this comment from Langdon. How long have I been subscribed? Every week we go through some of these. This is the longest I've seen in a while. Seven years from Langdon. Thank you for having subscribed to the channel for so long. If you want to know how long you've been subscribed, uh, leave a comment down below. If you have your subscriptions public, if your subscriptions aren't public on your YouTube channel, I'll have no clue how long you've been subscribed for because it's not public information. Speaking of public information, by the way, um, I just want to give a quick little PSA that when you get a comment that says, text me on Telegram at IBX Toy Cats or whatever, like there's so many scams like this, uh, you know, I, I won't leave, I, I won't have a YouTube comment to you that says uh, my username is text me on Telegram. In fact, I'm never going to tell you to contact me privately, except if it's in one of these videos somewhere. If it's not in one of these videos, be very skeptical and always check that the channel is correct. I had someone actually say they got scammed by one of these and it's like, don't, don't do that. You know, if you see uh, something that looks super suspicious, just don't. I know they're deliberately looking for people to prey on the, for these sorts of things and you've got to deliberately not fall for it. Speaking of not falling for things, this is my last video. <laughs> This is my last video uh, for a little bit inside of the United Kingdom. I hope, uh, you know, it's, it's crazy because we're going to go from having uh, the British well-dressed cat over there uh, to having the American cow again. Uh, I am still dealing with the fun uh, life situation that involves a little bit of bouncing back and forth. Just got some loose ends to tie up. And I wanted to say thank you uh, for watching this video. Thank you to all of those who have been supporting uh, the series and the channel as a whole. Uh, because, yeah, it's been a weird situation, but it makes me grateful for the things uh, that I you know, I have and that I appreciate and that there are people who are there to help things be less crazy. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you um, in the next one. That I know that cat is incredibly creepy.
But I just I just love it so much, right? How, how can you not? How can you not think this is the best background? And so, yeah, thank you for watching. See you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>because uh chuck wreck truck rep uh trump deck trump heck trump heck says is it 39 like in the title or is it 40 like in the description or maybe 45 as you say in the video referring to my video called so trump check trump check so trump check trump check so trump heck trump heck asks uh on my 39 survival tips you aren't considering video